Hey everybody, welcome to Burra Tech. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about the iOS development career path in 2021. Is it a good idea or is it not? All right, welcome back. For us in this video, I want to make sure that you like and subscribe. The more likes and subscribers we get, the more content we can make. The number one reason why you subscribe to this amazing channel is to get into the money-making trends before they go mainstream. So let's talk a little bit about iOS development. In a few videos ago, I did mention that iOS development was a good career path, but it has changed, and that's exactly what I'm going to talk about today. Now, a lot of people think iOS development means making it an app, putting it on the app store, selling millions of copies, and then retiring to the Cayman Islands. Well, this isn't exactly how it works, but there is a lot more demand in iOS development, which I will explain now. So one thing you have to understand about iOS development is that maybe 10, 12 years ago, you could make an app on the App Store and it would get a lot of visibility because the supply of apps was really down and mobile devices were just getting to be good. And the iPhone was an amazing leap forward in terms of technology and user interface. So of course, if you wanna make a really good app or a really good game and you solve some kind of problem with this app or make a really good game, it is possible to make a lot of money. People do it all the time. And it's really good uh, if you can do this. However, it is very challenging to do this. Now, of course, the number one reason why you wanna become a programmer is to make money and have a good future. And in iOS development, it's not becoming in independent developer that's gonna make you money. It's gonna be getting a job. And the jobs for iOS developers go up and up and up. And the reason is every business needs an iOS app to support their business. Whether you're DoorDash or Uber, you need a native iPhone app to help make your service, whatever it may be, accessible on iPhones. Now, iPhones are particularly interesting because the people who buy iPhones generally tend to be a little bit more wealthy and they tend to be a little bit more loose with their money. So because of this, it's worthwhile to put that effort into an app. So let's say you're a big business and you have a really good service. You make a web app first and then you want to make an iOS app. You need to hire iOS developers and those iOS developers need to have a ton of skills. And this is the hard part about iOS development. Now in web development, there's front end and back end developers. With iOS, you kind of need to do a little bit of both. And the thing about the iOS development platform is that it changes all the time. I remember a long time ago that you had to make storyboards in order to design your app, but now there's a new system of designing your app. So the framework is always changing and you always have to be on your toes. But what you need to understand about the iOS framework is that the UI and the backend code work very well together and it's done like that by design. The iPhone wouldn't have been an amazing success if it weren't for this marriage between code and user interface. In fact, if you've ever taken one of Mammoth Interactive's courses on iOS development, you will know that I always talk about how the functions really relate to the user interface and the user interactability. So there are a section of coders who aren't creative. And if this is you, don't worry, you can learn to be a little bit creative. And I highly recommend that you do because you will get more jobs if you can flex that creative muscle. So like I said, a lot of businesses are putting in money to make iOS iOS apps work. And with Apple's stance on their walled garden, it makes sense because Apple has a very tight, but they expect a high quality app to come out. And in order to make high quality apps, it takes a lot of time and a lot of money. And this is something that a lot of these big businesses have. And in order to make an app work and be amazing, it takes a huge team of developers. And this can be you. You can be one of the people on these teams building an app for a something like DoorDash or Uber or whatever big company or new startup that is happening. You can build the interface for the service with iOS. And it's a lot harder than you would expect. You can't just pull up a web view on iOS and expect it to work. There are lots of things that you have to program in. And because the framework changes so often between updates, you have to constantly manage your app. So with all of these factors, the demand goes up quite a bit. In addition, there are different sizes of iPhones. You have to make sure that they work on all the devices. And that might mean like a team per device. And you might think that's a little bit crazy, but it actually could be the case depending on how big and how big the budget of this particular iOS app is. There's a lot of features like payments and Face ID that require a lot more developer attention than you might expect. 
iOS development can be tricky, but once you get into it, I really like it. For example, I really like Swift. Swift is by far my favorite programming language. It's easy to use, easy to look at, and it's incredibly versatile. Those are all the things that you want in a programming language. So in addition to making sure that your app works on an iPhone, it might be required that your app might work on iPads. Now, there are so many different kinds of iPads with different capabilities, and we haven't even talked about gestures yet, which I will in just a sec. But when it comes to iPads, you have to make sure that your app works on all the iPads, and that might require its own team in itself, because the iPad has a different user experience than the iPhone. The iPhone has a very quick user experience, while the iPad might have a longer one. Generally, the smaller the screen, the less time people want to spend on it. So let's say if we want to make an app and it wants to have watch support, people should be spending the least amount of time on their watch, and then it goes up to the iPhone, iPad, or their computer. So here's the thing, if a company wants their app to work on all of their devices and work seamlessly, that takes a lot of work and a huge team. In fact, there's not only just the team of developers, there's the team of testers, and if you aren't good at developing iPhone apps today, then perhaps you can become a tester. And becoming a tester is a great way to become a developer. If you test all day and hang out with the developers and learn iOS programming in your spare time, you might be able to climb up the corporate ladder. So going back to the watch for a second, again, the app might have watch support, which is something completely different. Now, of course, the more complicated the app, the bigger the team that it needs to be. And again, it's a lot more complicated than a lot of people think. Making iOS apps is expensive because Apple demands such high quality. And if it's a very complicated app, it basically exponentially raises the team of whatever it is that needs to be done. And the other thing is that iPhone apps need maintenance. They need people to look at it because bugs can happen for any given reason at any given time. In fact, a bug can happen on the web platform and it will show up weird on the iOS platform. And so all these teams need to talk to each other. So if you wanna be a iOS programmer and a web developer, in fact, this is something that I really recommend people do if they are want to be an iOS developer. If they wanna be an iOS developer, you should also be a web developer, at least know the basics because a lot of times these things will talk to each other. The other thing is we haven't even talked about Android development. Now, oftentimes if there's an iPhone app, there needs to be an Android app as well. And those need to kind of talk to each other too. Now, of course, it is somewhat easy as you may have a central server that both platforms are connecting to, but you would be surprised at how many different things can occur between iOS and Android and the web. It's a lot more complicated than you think. So here's the thing about iOS development. A lot of people don't think that it's a good starter, but believe it or not, iOS development might be the best place to start to get a job as quickly as possible. The only thing that's really hard for a lot of people is mastering the UI and the function. And once you understand the bigger concept on how those two work together, then iOS development becomes really easy. Now, I've been an iOS developer for almost a decade now, and I still really like it. However, when I tell software as a service startups to start up their app, I always say, go web first, than iOS, because the iOS is reserved for once your company gets bigger. But if you wanna to learn to code, then iOS is probably one of the best places to start because not only is the demand high, but the supply is actually surprisingly low. And believe it or not, the demand for iOS developers goes up year over year as the iOS platform and the whole Mac ecosystem gets more and more complicated. The other thing you can do is you can specialize in a particular area. You can actually do machine learning on an iPhone and if you specialize in that, well, then that's great because if you can understand how that works on an iPhone, then you are in a very good position to not only have a job, but keep a job. The other thing that you need to understand as any developer, but this is particularly true with iOS development is that you have to spend a a lot of your spare time keeping up with the trends. Now, if you're lucky enough to work at a company that gives you time to do this, that's great. But you do probably need to spend maybe a few hours a month making sure your skills are up to date. I remember that I wanted to make an app for the iPhone and then Xcode updated and it updated in such a way that I couldn't do it. I was gonna make a YouTube video on how to make an app in 30 minutes, but it was so different that I couldn't do it. So I had to go and relearn how to do that to make that particular video. And this will 
happen again and again. And as the iOS ecosystem gets more and more complicated, you're going to have to keep up more and more with how it works. But the answer to the question, should you be an iOS developer, depends on a few factors. One, are you willing to put in the time? And two, are you willing to learn some design aspects? If you're willing to do both of these two things, then yes, I would highly recommend being an iOS developer as it is a very fruitful career. All right, so that concludes this video. Is an iOS developer a good choice? Is it better than Android? I want to know your comments down below. Remember that this channel doesn't do Patreon said we sell our digital products down below. The more we're gonna get from the content that you buy below, the more content on this channel we can make. If you really like this channel, you can subscribe to Mammoth Interactive's huge library of content. We release 20 to 60 hours of fresh new content per month, every single month. It really does help us out when you subscribe. We have a monthly and yearly option. Our goal is to get to 10,000 paid subscribers on Mammoth Interactive. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video.